Welcome to our Bible study series by HelpfulScripture.com. In this video, we review the 10 most relevant Bible verses about God's Word. If you want to study this topic more, then be sure to click the link below to our website. Our website, HelpfulScripture.com, has many more passages on this topic, and hundreds of additional topics. Also, if you want to share the Bible with others, then click the like button and share this video with your friends. Now let's get started. Passage number 1. The first verse on the subject of God's Word is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. It says, But you remain in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. From infancy, you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Every scripture is God-breathed and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that each person who belongs to God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Passage number 2. The second verse in our study of God's word is found in Psalm chapter 19, verses 7 through 13. It says, Yahweh's law is perfect, restoring the soul. Yahweh's covenant is sure, making wise the simple. Yahweh's precepts are right, rejoicing the heart. Yahweh's commandment is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. Yahweh's ordinances are true, and righteous altogether. They are more to be desired than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the extract of the honeycomb. Moreover your servant is warned by them. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Forgive me from hidden errors. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I will be upright. I will be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Passage number 3. For our third verse, we turn in our Bible to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. It reads, Let's therefore give diligence to enter into that rest, lest anyone fall after the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and is able to discern the thoughts and intentions of the heart. There is no creature that is hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and laid open before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Having then a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let's hold tightly to our confession. For we don't have a high priest who can't be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but one who has been in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let's therefore draw near with boldness to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and may find grace for help in time of need. Passage number 4. This is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 through 25. The scripture says, Who was foreknown indeed before the foundation of the world, but was revealed in this last age for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing you have purified your souls in your obedience to the truth through the Spirit in sincere brotherly affection, love one another from the heart fervently, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and remains forever. For, all flesh is like grass, and all of man's glory like the flower in the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls, but the Lord's word endures forever. This is the word of good news which was preached to you. Passage number 5. The fifth verse is from James chapter 1, verses 21 through 23. The Bible says, Therefore, putting away all filthiness and overflowing of wickedness, receive with humility the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not only hearers, deluding your own selves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his natural face in a mirror. Congratulations! You've made it halfway through our study. So let's pause here for a moment. I want to remind you again that if you want to study this topic more, then be sure to visit the link in the description below. The link will take you to our website, helpfulscripture.com, where you can study more Bible verses on the subject of God's Word, and hundreds of other topics. Now let's continue our study on God's Word. Passage number 6 is from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. It says, God, having in the past spoken to the fathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways, 
has at the end of these days spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. His Son is the radiance of his glory, the very image of his substance, and upholding all things by the word of his power, who, when he had by himself purified us of our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much better than the angels as the more excellent name he has inherited is better than theirs. For to which of the angels did he say at any time, You are my son. Today I have become your father, and again, I will be to him a father, and he will be to me a son. When he again brings in the firstborn into the world he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. Passage number 7. The seventh verse is found in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible says, But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God's mouth. Passage number 8. The eighth verse on the subject of God's word is from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 through 21. It reads, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of private interpretation. For no prophecy ever came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke, being moved by the Holy Spirit. Passage number 9. Our ninth verse is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 through 16. The passage states, For this cause we also thank God without ceasing that when you received from us the word of the message of God, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth God's word, which also works in you who believe. For you, brothers, became imitators of the assemblies of God which are in Judea in Christ Jesus, for you also suffered the same things from your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews who killed both the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and drove us out, and don't please God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they may be saved, to fill up their sins always. But wrath has come on him to the uttermost. Passage number 10. Our tenth and final verse on the subject of God's word is from Acts chapter 17, verse 11. It says, Now these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. This concludes our Bible study on the topic of God's Word. If you want to study this topic more, then click the link below to visit our website, where we have many more Bible verses related to God's Word, and hundreds of other Bible subjects. Also, remember to like the video and share it with your friends on social media, to help spread the gospel. Thanks again for listening and God bless.